Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode 16 of My Hero Academia season 5. Long time no see, Selkie, which has been a while. I, I'm trying to think of when we last saw Selkie. Maybe it was season 2 or season 1. <laughs> or it's been, I don't think it was at all last season. I don't think it was season 3 either. So I think it was season 1 or season 2. But it's been a while indeed. Uh, last episode was really good. We had Bakugo and Todoroki and Deku kind of going with Endeavor and his agency and learning the ropes. And I like Endeavor as... Endeavor is a surprisingly effective teacher for those three. I don't think that he's necessarily the best teacher um, because of his personality. He's kind of a just what... Going back to what he said, just watch me, you know. But for those three particularly, they're smart enough they can pick up on what he's doing and they can keep up with him somewhat. And so I feel like Endeavor's a good instructor for them particularly in developing as heroes. But that's kind of a thing too because as we've seen, the Hero Commission is getting all of these students to do the work studies in preparation for what happens if the mission that Hawks is currently under right now, if things go bad and go south, um, they're planning to use the kids as insurance. And that's problematic and concerning. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, Hawks has infiltrated the Meta Liberation Army and the League of Villains and is kind of in up to his neck. And we'll see just what happens with all that. But I, I feel like this episode is going to be kind of like the transition between the seasons, even though it's episode 16, even though we're past the halfway point at, at this stage, I feel like this is a transition, right? So I have my coffee. I woke up. I'm like, it's time to watch My Hero Academia. I'm pretty excited. So let's see what episode 16 is about, shall we? We are going to start episode 16 here in five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. Oh, so this was this was a cute episode. I <laughs> I had forgotten where Selkie came from. I think it's season two because in season two we had the the hero missions. I could be wrong. It could be season one, but it's been a while. Um, but I do like I forgot I do like Selkie. He thinks he's gonna be cute for the younger generation, and they're like, mm -mm. although Froppy and Nezure find him cute, which is hilarious because Nezure is into like all the cutesy things as well. So. I, uh, Ryuku, I haven't seen, like, I was trying to look at her agency to check out on this, and so Ravity shows off her new suit and all of that. Uh, I wanted to get a little better look at Ryuku's, like, headquarters, because I, I love it's like a library, and there's, everything's dragon-themed. It has, like, a very Eastern vibe. I love it, like, all the reds and everything. And then, um, I am sad that we didn't get to see the sidekicks come along, but again, it's, it's all Froppy and Nezure and Uraka's episode, and, of course, Nezure is like, a secret? What kind of secret? And Froppy's like, mm -hmm, I know exactly what's going on. But I do like the design of it. Also, let it be known that I'm, I'm going to guess that Ryuji, maybe she's a Taurus. I don't know. But um, so many decadent things. Ryu, Ryuku is all about the, uh, not Ryuji, Ryuku is all about the decadent things. Like, she wants the nice drinks, the nice desserts. I hope that's canon because I really like that she's, like, all into everything. Even when they're on the side of the cliff, where it's the beach and it's her and Selkie. She demands an umbrella, a table, and a dessert or a cocktail. She's like, I demand the finer things while I'm here. And Selkie's like, sure, whatever. I'd forgotten Sirius's um, quirk, which is just to hear really good, which makes a lot of sense because if you're working with Selkie, Selkie's main thing is he can do anything that a seal can, and one of those being sonar and echolocation. So, of course, you need somebody that could hear that, those wave, those sound waves that he produces, and her quirk would be perfect for that. So I'm like, top notch makes a lot of sense. Um, I like that this entire episode is tying to the movie, it seems, because the movie's coming out this month, right, in Japan. So they're trying to tie to the movie. And so that makes a lot of sense. We'll talk about this more in the spoiler corner. But I get that that's why some of the plot line there at the end in the final credit scene, I'm like, okay, so that's going to be the bad guy or one of the bad guys in the new movie. They're tying it to this drug creation. Okay, cool. Tie that sucker all in. That all makes sense. That that makes sense of why this episode is where it is. It's just a tie into the movie with Endeavor's agency. So I get that. That That's got it. Gotcha. Totally understandable. Um... 
But yeah, I like that they each get to show off that Froppy and Ravity get to show off their abilities in this episode. Sue Yu getting to show off um, her ability to like work with um, Selkie really well, with the team being able to use her abilities. And then definitely this was a Ravity's episode though, because she got to show off like her ability to not give up and kind of what she's learned from helping Deku with Black Whip and all that. And I was like, just make this, at first I was like, just make the ship weightless. And then I thought, oh, wait, no, that's not a good idea because she's going to throw up because it's so heavy. I'm glad that they make a callback. Sometimes, especially in episodes like these or when you're five seasons into a show, you forget about the downside of characters' abilities if it's a show where they have quirks or abilities or powers. And I liked that this episode went back and reminded us that, yeah, Ravity can make anything weightless, but the heavier it is, the more she has to exert herself, the more she's going to make herself sick. So that was a nice call back to season one. That was a really nice little reminder because I had honestly forgot. I was like, oh, just make the ship weightless. And then it's like, oh, okay, no, it's, it's going to take a lot to do that. I just like that this episode shows kind of the growth with our characters and showing how much they've learned in the last couple seasons. So that was nice. Um... <laughs> And of course, it's just a wonderful excuse to give us beachy fan service. Uh, Horikoshi uh, put a tweet, a tweet out this morning, and I wanted to put it up here, of all of the girls in their bathing suits. And I thought it was just a cute sketch that he did, but I didn't realize that it's them in the bathing suits that they wear in this episode. So I'm assuming Horikoshi designed them himself, which is okay. Fair enough. They're all really cute. I'm trying to think if I had any of those. I don't usually wear a two-piece. I usually do like a tank a tank if I'm going to do something like that or um, do like an old-fashioned swimsuit. I'd probably say, if I was going to pick one, I like the ruffles on Sirius's. I would say probably Sirius's if I had to pick one. But that's really super cute. Super, super cute. Or Nezure's. Nezure's is pretty good too. And I like that they have just like a barbecue and like Sirius eating like a sea turtle leg. I'm like, aren't those endangered? <laughs> But I like that it's, I love that Arak is like, I want another barbecue. It's like, man, if the guy characters were there, they'd like be all over that. But good for you, ladies. And so, yeah, I really thought that our bad guy here, which I guess because it's just one episode, so we can't really, I really thought that the giant, the confrontation at the end was going to be the guy, he kind of looked like Spike from Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I thought our Spike villain was going to have like a quirk and try to use it, but no. He was just using the other guys that had quirks and was making them drug themselves. And then I like that. I also like that Uraka has the martial art ability. She's like, meh, and just tosses him up. Because when, when you see Uraka on the screen, she has the pink outfit. And she's very cute. And you think that she's just like this cutesy hero. But no, nah, girl can do some martial arts moves and girl has a good quirk. Like, you don't mess with Uraka. And so I, I really like that. She kind of, her, her opponents underestimate her. But girl, trying to fly a plane, I'd have freaked out. I've been like, I don't know what to do. We're going to crash this. And then I like that Nejere gets to use her ability, too, to kind of help in the situation as well. That was really, really good. And then, of course, this episode has to give us that little line at the end where Selkie's like, let's enjoy this momentary moment of peace. I'm like, way to be self-aware show. <laughs> way to be self-aware. That's all I'll say. But yeah, I mean, it was really cute. I like at the end, I want to go back to when they're at the very end here, after they stop the bad guy. It's like, well, while you're here, let's have another day on the beach. And I like that they're fishing. And, uh, well, Froppy is not fishing. Sirius has a net. And then Nezure and Uraka are fishing. And then having, cl having clams and crab and all this stuff, like lobster. I like that Suyu bunches her hair up in a little knot. That's really cute. And Nijere has her hat. Very, very cute. And then, um, I yeah, I think I'd have Nijere's swimsuit if I had to have all of them. I think I'd have Nijere's. And then they all go, like, parasailing at the end. And I want to see that final shot there. And so Otheon, they, the only thing, they, they conveniently don't know anything about the thing because it's a one-off. Um, that it's a country in Europe, so... Hmm, interesting. Yeah, Otheon. Selkie's like, well, we stopped it. She's like, you're not cute. And he's like, I've been, I've realized this recently. It's like, Selkie, maybe not cute to everybody. 
So yeah, and then they say the line of looking back there. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't know who's. I guess they've had one of the sailors uh, pilot the boat because you have um, Nejere and see you on one of those little banana boats that you see at the beach. They're like the banana boats that you can tie to something like carry people on. So they have one of those, and then um, it looks like. Ochako, of course, is parasailing, of course, and then Sirius is doing some jet skiing, so water skiing, so nice. Yeah, let's enjoy <laughs> this momentary piece. Thanks, episode, for reminding us. But yeah, um, I do have a few spoilery things I want to talk about, but all in all, it was this is a pretty transitional episode. It was cute. It was good. It was a nice little one and done episode. And I'm glad that we at least get, I'm glad they at least give Araka and Froppy an episode to themselves where they get something to do. That's fun. So yeah, it was cute. I'm glad I watched that. That was nice. And it ties into the movie. So it's like a little wink to that. Um, but I do have some spoilers I want to talk about. So if you're not sticking around for spoiler corner, um, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And I'll talk to you all again real soon. Uh, if you are sticking around for spoilers, there's not too much to talk about. I tried to look up the voice cast for this episode because the bad guy sounded like Miano Mamaru. And yeah, he doesn't voice anybody in this series. So I'm like, well, did they just hire him to like do a one-off villain for the day? Um, it sounded like him, but I couldn't find a voice cast that showed who was playing him. So it, maybe it wasn't. I think if it was him, they would have advertised that more or had it featured or given him more of a vocal part maybe so I don't know it just sounded similar to him um but I mean with the episode itself there's not a lot of spoilery things to talk about um I do find it kind of in the foreshadowing of Nejere and Ryuku being together working together it's a nice little nod because later on when we get to the war arc um Ryuku becomes injured fighting Shigaraki and Nejere comes to her rescue. So Nejere comes to help Ryuku later on. And because and she talks about that bond that her and Ryuku have developed over their internships together. So I think that this episode was nice in giving us a little bit of that to see Nejere and Ryuku working together. Because that's a little bit of a foundation of, okay, Nejere looks up to Ryuku as a mentor. So when Ryuku gets hurt later, that's part of Nejere's motivation to step up and be a hero. So I do appreciate that a lot. I like that a lot. And Aravity's development in this episode is pretty much just sticking with, I mean, it's going to kind of come back later and be talked about more in the canon. So it's like, it, it's fine. And then Suyu getting to see, Suyu's voice actress is so adorable. I love her. She Her voice acting for Suyu's character is so wonderful. It's like, you can't help but go, aww, every time you see her on screen. So that was nice as well. But I just... I'm, I'm not a filler episode person, but I do appreciate with this specifically. I get why they did this episode. It's because it's tying into the movie. Okay. You had to find a way to sneak it in somehow and tease it. Fine. The villain looks a bit weird. I'll be honest. I'm like, oh, he's got this queer, weird, like, mirror, questionable mirror thing on his costume. But okay, fine. Whatever. Um, I, I get why they did it and why they put it here. Um... It's fine. This was a fine filler episode. It's one of those where at the end when they said they didn't really find out anything, I'm like, well, it's convenient for the plot that you didn't because it's not tying back anywhere uh, except for the Otheon thing, which is going to tie to the movie. And so I get why they placed it here because the Heroes Endeavors Agency is going to tie into it as well. I wonder if that means that Uraraka and Froppy are going to be in the movie more since they tie into the plot this way because honestly, you could have tied in the movie plot with Endeavor and them. You could have done a filler episode with Shoto and Bakugo and Deku, but you chose to do it with Uraka and Suyu, so I'm wondering if they're going to tie them into the movie. That would be interesting. I think that would be kind of cool. So, I don't know. The movie just comes out this month, so I figured that that's why they're doing it now, and it kind of, the timing of it is right. And they had to plan this ahead of time, so it's like, okay. Um, but what I'm most interested in about all this is the preview, because I've been wondering with the timeline, like, how are we doing this? How are we doing this? And it's pretty, um, it's pretty uh, set in stone now how they're doing it. And that is that they are going to, the next episode is technically the last mini arc before the start of the war arc, which is where I thought season six would start. So what it looks like they're doing is wrapping up 
all of the Todoroki Shoto Endeavor business. They're wrapping it all up next episode or the episode after next. And then doing the My Villain Academia for the rest of the season. Which I'm fine with. I'm okay with that. I I keep getting so excited because the OP is teasing me. The OP is teasing me about Redestro. It's teasing me about the My Villain Academia. It is teasing me about Getten and the other villains that are with Metal Liberation Army that are going to attack uh, twice in the others. It's teasing me with that. It's teasing me with Shigaraki. This whole OP is a big old tease. And I'm like, fine. If we spend the last... Because what's next episode is episode 17. So 17, 18... If we do, let's say that the Endeavor thing takes two episodes. It might not. They might wrap it all up in one. But let's say it takes two. I think they can wrap... I think they can do the, the hellish Todoroki family in one episode, honestly. I think they can if they wanted to. So let's say episode 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's still eight episodes. That's still eight episodes to do My Villain Academia. That is... It's condensing it. I mean, it's going to make it a little bit more fast-paced. But again... A lot of those chapters in the My Villain Academia arc are action panels, are action pages. So anytime you have action pages, they go by quickly. Like you can, I, in some episodes of My Hero Academia, where you've had a, an episode where a lot of action is taking place, it's not unreasonable for four or five chapters to get covered in an episode because most of them are just Horikoshi doing action shots. So that's fine. If they can do, I think they can do the Todoroki family drama in one episode. I really think they can. Um, endings thing. I don't think they have to stretch it out. But that would, it makes sense why they're doing it next because we're tying into Endeavor. I love it. Again. Bakugo, Bakugo forehead and burning. Up. Oh, I love it. I love it. And she, her teasing him. Yep. And then, oh, that shot of Bakugo is really, really good. And Endeavor and them. And so then, of course, he's on the phone with Fuyumi and she takes him back to his house. Their big old mansion. So we're going to, Oh, okay. And it makes sense that we're tying to toy. It makes sense. We're, I'm, I'm rewatching the preview. It makes sense that we're doing this episode next because we are tying into the Todoroki family. And not only, I was wondering how if they'd end the season on this storyline with the family. It's one of my favorites in the series. I love the whole Todor the hellish Todoroki family storyline, the arc with Endeavor and Natsu. Um, I wondered how they were going to do this, but it would make sense if they're doing it next episode because one, it's going to tie into Endeavor's agency before he transitioned to My Villain Academia. But two, this is the episode, and this is the part of the manga where we talk about Toya, where we start talking about Toya. And that is the whole thing with Dobby tying in again afterwards. It's all going to make sense. Okay, I'm on board with it. I'm on board with it. Yeah, and we're going to get into the family drama with the Todorokis. And, yep, and I can't wait to talk about this next week. This is going to be fun. Yay. Yay. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff, y'all. I can't wait to talk about this, actually. Next week, uh, the Todoroki family drama is one of my favorites, and there's going to be a lot to talk about, so I'm pretty excited, y'all. But, yeah, exciting stuff. So um, that's what's going to be for next week. So I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. Again, not a lot of spoilery stuff or things to talk about. For a filler episode, it was fine. It went by quickly. It was entertaining. It was cute. There was fan service. I'm t it wasn't boring. So I'm like, okay, cool. Fine, fine filler. But I think starting next week, we're getting into the big shit. So I'm excited. I hope you all are too. But in any case... Um, let me know what you thought down below with the episode. Let me know if you're if you've seen read the manga. Let me know if you're excited for what's to come. But otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you all again real soon with more My Hero Academia. Bye.